Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial series that I'm starting on my channel. If you were around for the last one, which was the Golden Labrador, then it's going to be the exact same format where we'll draw different features of the animal together in real time. So for this first tutorial we're going to start out with the eyes, which I always start out with the eyes. So I'm going to zoom in and let's just get started. Everything that you'll need for this tutorial I will make sure to list in the description box and this will include the line drawing so you can download that, uh, print it out and trace over it with some tracing paper then onto your drawing paper if you'd prefer or you can draw it out freehand if you want to get practicing with that. Um, but alternatively, yeah, you can just trace it if you like. Um, what else was I going to say? I'm probably going to be using mainly Polychromos pencils from Faber-Castell for this tutorial but I might chuck a few Luminance and Pablo's in there but we'll get to that, um, cross that bridge when it comes to it. If you don't have all the exact colours that I'm using, don't worry. Just find whatever you can that's closest to it. At the end of the day it's not about copying an exact uh, process, it's just using this as a guide and learning a few techniques along the way. So hopefully you'll enjoy this tutorial and I'll just get started now adding the colour. I always seem to start every single portrait by outlining the eye with dark sepia or some other sort of darker colour. Um, this is dark sepia from Faber-Castell Polychromos and all I do is just start to add the outline which just frames the eyes nicely and gives you a bit of a guideline to start with. So I'll just begin doing that on the right eye. Really lightly, using a really sharp pencil. This just means when you go to rub out the pencil lines to um, add the colour to the, the middle of the eye, you've got a bit more of a guide. I'm just using, um, the size of this piece is A4, just for reference, if you wanted to do it the exact same size. So I'm just adding in a couple of details there where it's a bit darker, where I don't know how you describe this bit, you know the bit that comes across here, I'm just going to add that in, the corner of the eye. I love this reference photo of this cat. As soon as I saw it I was like, yes, I need to do a tutorial on that. Just such a nice photo and I like how it's led down and it's not just the standard like, you know, headshot that I usually do. I thought seeing as I did a dog last time it would make sense to do a cat this time. bit here where it comes up like that and I'm just gonna add this little bit into this little squiggly shape Just outline the pupil. Again, just adds a nice little guide for where we're going to be adding colour soon. The 
there is a reflection just in this bottom part of the pupil so I'm going to add that in because that all adds to the realness, realism. Like that. And there's a reflection here. I think they're actually soft boxes that you can see in the reflection. Um, I don't know how literally I'm going to draw that but I'll just go around it for now. This must have been taken in a studio or something. Right. I think for now, on the outline, that'll do. So next, I'm just going to use my putty eraser, which if you don't have one of these, I strongly recommend getting one. It's better than a normal eraser because you can just dab and the pencil lines come off really easily without getting loads of little bits everywhere that you have to brush off and it just keeps it generally a lot cleaner. So yeah, I've much preferred using one of these recently to a normal eraser. So next we're going to use a base colour of ivory, which I also do this quite a lot with eyes, depending on the colour. So ivory from Faber Castell polychromos and I'm just going to use this to press on quite firmly, apply a medium to hard pressure to the coloured parts of the eye. I always apply a base colour um, before adding the details on top because it smooths out the paper and it just makes it so much easier to add the details in. It's like they go, go on like buttery and smooth rather than all grainy and picking up each little grain in the paper. Just overall it saves a lot of time and it looks cleaner and better. So yeah, I always do a base colour. Unless you're drawing like a white dog and you're doing like warm grey one on top or something really faintly but that's that's for another video <laughs> so yeah that is our base colour for this eye now I'm going to use some earth green from the polychromos range and I'm just going to start adding in a little bit of this squiggly sort of like details on top pressing really lightly and literally just sort of like building it up like that doing little lines just sort of following the direction that you can see in the reference And it is looking a little bit on the dull side, so I'm going to add a brighter green in after this. This is mostly just to map out those details. I love earth green, it's such a nice coloured green, nice tone. Sorry I've not uploaded in a long time, if you um, are subscribing you've been waiting for a new tutorial. I've had a lot of commissions like all of a sudden just coming in at once which always seems to happen. When you're doing work like this, not even necessarily pet portraits but if if you work for yourself and you look so like a freelance artist or anything where you get commissions or anything like that you might have a gap where you don't get anything for a couple of months so I think oh I'll get on with like making YouTube videos and 
all that kind of stuff and then all of a sudden it's like everything comes at once and sometimes there's deadlines and if it's for a birthday gift or something like that so I've just been slacking on the tutorials lately so my apologies but yeah I've had some lovely uh, messages about them so it's very motivating so thank you for that I just feel a bit rusty now <laughs> I've forgotten how to do this oh well sure I'll get back into the swing of things right I'm going to use now a brighter green so this is light pathalo pathalo green uh, number 162 anyway and I'm just going to sort of lightly glaze over what we've already done and just brighten up the tone just adds a bit more of like a turquoisey green I'm using a really light hand with this because it is bright So it's like a nice vibrant colour. And then same again. This top bit. of like coming out of the pupil like in upwards squiggly motions so it all blends into that slightly yellower bit at the top this is such a nice colour as well I'll just add a bit more earth green just to the areas around here where I can see like darker little squiggles that aren't as bright just add a bit of detail a bit more depth and here it's a bit duller at the side like that and I think I'll just it's a little like lighter bit at the side here which I'm gonna attempt to leave a space a bit of negative space so you can see it but I'm not sure if you can really I'm just gonna add a few more squiggly bits around here with the earth green A bit more here. Outline that eye a little bit. Because there is a bit more of a shadow at the bottom.
just going to lightly just glaze over that bit there. Just add a bit more green. Right, I think until I add that pupil now it's going to look a bit weird so I'm going to start adding the pupil in. So I'm going to use my teeny tiny little cold grey two from Polychromos and just going to start adding a base layer all over that pupil apart from where the uh, the white sort of reflection is. Reflection? Is that what that is? Yeah. The highlight, the little reflection in the eye. So I'm just going to avoid that area but sort of like blend it out a little bit like that just so it's not got a harsh line. I'm just going to colour over this bit here, this pencil line, because it's going to act as a guide underneath that base colour. And you won't be able to see it in the end anyway. And I don't think I'm going to take the softbox reflection in the eye so literally. I think it's a softbox anyway. Just gonna sort of do more of like a um, less obvious shape in the eye. If that makes sense. Right. Next, I'm gonna use Payne's Grey from the Polychromos. All my pencils are tiny. I need to get some new ones, and I'm just gonna start to add in the shape of the pupil. Pressing them relatively hard but not not too hard. And this is kind of like a bluey toned grey. I always see it as like the the cold equivalent of dark sepia. Cold tone version, and I'm just gonna start gradually building up those darker bits. Still leaving that um, reflection. Following that line. It does actually get quite a bit darker at the top, so I'll probably add some black in there. Afterwards, I'm just going to really lightly blend the pencil down a bit here. And just add an outline there. Blend it down there.
trying to smooth it all out and then just trying to decide what to do with this bit. I think I'll get my cold grey tip again, wherever that's gone. There it is. And I'm just going to draw a little shape, but not quite so detailed like it is in the picture. And just going to use Payne's Grey again. And I'm just going to add a few lines in. Nothing too major. more of like a blue tone just to make that eye pop a little bit so I'm going to find one so I'm going to use light cobalt turquoise polychromos and just blend into that highlight just adds a nice little bit of colour to make the highlight pop I think it needs a lot more depth in this pupil, so I'm going to use black. A lot of people say don't use black till the end, but sometimes I do like to see that it's going to look right at the time that I'm doing it, if that makes sense. I like it to look as it will at the end, but I'm only using a tiny bit, so just try not to smudge it when you're um, drawing around it. Like don't lean your hand on it too much, that's all. I'm just going to add a little bit of black just to really darken it up. So it's darker at the top here. Just using a really light pressure and gradually building up layers. Then, like here, it's a bit darker. Let's blend all that together and a little bit at the bottom. Like that. Right. Now I think I need to darken up these outer parts of the eye before I can do anything else to the inside. It's hard to tell some, how much you need to do until that bit is done. So I'm just going to use dark sepia again and just going to further darken up. This part of the eye. lighter here so I won't press on as hard just 
just sharpen it a little bit. Before I go too much further, I'm just going to use warm grey too as a base layer. Just, just moving out this little bit. that here as well, put it in a corner. And I'm going to use dark sepia again and I'm just going to add some more detail. Leaving a tiny little space there with this like a miniature tiny little highlight. Don't have to do that though. Doing sort of like almost like little hair strokes. Just to start adding in the detail. It's a bit darker on the top. Then I'm just going to use some nougat and I'm just going to fill this bit in more. It needs a bit more brown. Then back to dark sepia. Starting it up a tiny bit. really lightly going over the top of that nougat. Leaving it ever so slightly lighter in the centre. In those little sort of fur strokes. Coming out from the eye. Following the direction on the picture, so about going in this direction.
I'm just going to darken up this inner corner. That's looking a little bit odd. So it's a bit darker here. And then it's like a little weird triangle shape here. about getting that bit spot on. As long as you get the general little shapes in it's fine. Just building up the darker tone around the outside. There's just a tiny little bit of a highlight along the bottom here that I've missed and I thought it'd probably be better to go back in with a white pencil so I'm going to use the oh, Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle white pencil this is really good I recommend this if you've uh, not got it and I'm just gonna use it to sort of add a line on top of oh it's just broken Add a line on top of that lower eyelid. That's it. And then I'm just going to use dark soup here again to fix what I've um, got rid of with that line. Just outline it. If you don't have the um, Museum Aquarell white, Luminance white is also good for adding in little highlight details like that. I think it needs a bit more. Here, a bit darker here. Just a bit darker here. I'm just going to start. Adding some little squiggly lines around here to get that texture of the um, whatever this bit's called. <laughs> the inner corner. Just going to use that warm grey too again, just to extend this little bit. And it's looking a little bit on the purpley side, so I'm going to use brownish beige from the Pablo's. I like Pablo's better than Luminance now, I think, that I've tried a few more shades. 
they're more similar to um, the polychromos than the luminance are in terms of like texture and they've got a really nice colour range. I don't know if I'd ever buy a full set but I had a few to my collection every time I do a pencil order so if you don't have this but you've got luminance you can use um, sepia 10% or just use whatever colour you have that's closest. like to use quite a lot of different colours to get that realism effect. I'm going to use dark sepia again just to add in some more details. like that. Then I think next I'm going to start on the area just around the eye, Got a bit more colour in there. So I'm going to use ivory and we're just going to use that to create a base. Just around the eye. Add a bit of warmth. Then I'm going to use a bit of buff titanium from the luminance range. Found it. This is a really nice colour to use as a base when it's like a pale warm tone but there's not a lot of colour there. I'm just going to add that around to the areas just around. Just use ivory if you want, but it just adds a nice extra bit of warmth. sharp pencil and just going to start adding in some little tiny little fur strokes to this inner corner. And 
a few just at the top. adds a nice bit of warmth just really light little strokes just gonna rub out this pencil line and do this little bit as well just with my putty eraser just gonna get that um of titanium. Base colour and then just do a few first strokes. over each other a little bit just using a combination of ivory and buff titanium just going to make this base coat um, a bit bigger Now I'm going to use nougat again and I'm just going to start adding in even more little first strokes. making sure to always keep looking at the reference picture so you can see which direction they're going in I'm making sort of like little crisscrossing over motions so like a couple that direction then just never all in the same direction so it looks a bit more natural Makes sense, just like a bit random. I'm just going to draw these coming out of the eyelids.
and just kind of bring them out a little bit further. Sometimes instead of going like forwards, I'll go back a few strokes as well just to mix things up a little bit. <laughs> right, now on to the next eye I think. So I'm just going to use the exact same sort of process and I'm going to use dark sepia to outline those darker areas. Get a nice guide. Little weird black triangle shape there. <laughs> you can sort of see where some of the lighter hairs are crossing over the, the darker bits. So I'm just going to leave some little gaps here. little shapes of the inner corner there where I'm just gonna leave it. I'll just sharpen my pencil and I'm gonna carry on along the top. and around the eye. Again, there's some little hairs here that cross over the dark a bit, so I'm just gonna and leave a tiny gap like that. It's better to leave it than to try and achieve it with a white pencil or something later. So like before, I'm just going to use ivory as a base colour again. This eye's a lot darker to be honest, but we'll just build up some more of the shadows. I 
and I'm actually just gonna use Payne's Grey just to outline that pupil because I think I might lose it a bit here and get confused. So I'm just gonna really lightly outline it just so I can see where it is. Then I'm going to use that earth green and light patholo green again, this two, this combination and I'm going to start with the earth green. I'm just going to start adding in some more details and I'm going to leave the lighter areas for the highlights are just a bit lighter. Like here there's a few little weird shapes in the reflection. all the way across the eye there like that so just gonna draw around that a little bit and there's a little um, lighter bit at the bottom again like there was on the other eye the other eye where we added the the white this time I'm just going to leave that a little bit because it's a bit more yellow there. Then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of this uh, light patholo green just to brighten it up a tiny bit. It is a lot darker this eye because it's more in shadows. Just ever so slightly glazing over it. And I'm just going to use cold grey too again, like we did for the other eye, and just outline, sorry not outline, fill in the pupil with the base coat. Then Payne's grey again, just to darken up that pupil. Making sure to draw that highlighting. And there's one here as well, so just colouring in a little triangle there. And 
that's a ship so coming around the top and I'm just gonna blend this out a bit more darker of a dark tone to that bottom bit of this highlight this eye is a little bit more confusing with the highlights and then just going to add in the darker bit at the bottom like that and just gonna add a bit more paint grey blended into it as well it's really lightly glazing over it and then I think it needs some dark sepia as a shadow on this bit I'm just going to lightly build up a bit of a shadow more earth green just to blend that together I think Trying to blend it all together a little bit more. Just need to change my camera battery. There we go. Um, I was adding a bit more shadow, wasn't I? So I think I'm just going to add a bit more earth green. add a bit of black into the pupil just so I can get that contrast right See it start to come together a bit more now.
Laura Payne's grey. Just here. It's pretty. And then I'm going to add a bit more dark sepia just to create more detail in this inner corner. Just sort of drawing the weird little shapes that you can see. Creating the illusion of detail though really. Don't need to be like absolutely spot on perfect. I think just while I'm looking I'm gonna add a bit more earth green into this bit of the eye just to darken it up a tiny bit. And this bit. A lot of the time it's just adding things in as and when you see them. So I'm just going to use that uh, white again. And I'm going to add in that little line at the bottom like we did on this eye. I might just sharpen it a tiny bit. It needs to be super sharp for this. Then just going to carefully drill that in. Very faintly on this one. And I'm just going to use Payne's Grey. I want to just add a bit more of a, a darker tone to that middle highlight. Just going to really carefully just go over it a bit. It's looking a bit too bright. There we go. So I'm going to start um, adding in the ivory around the eye as the base coat. And around the bottom, oh, I missed a bit there. I'll just use that warm grey, sorry, cold grey too. There we go. Gonna use that dark sepia again just to uh, add a bit more of a definition along that bottom. Bottom eyelid. that together a little bit and I'm going to use a bit of that buff titanium just to warm it up and create a nice base for that burnt ochre.
definitely not a necessary step to be fair. But I've committed to it now, so. <laughs> Just add nice warmth. Okra again, just start adding in some little first stroke detailing. So I turn like a slightly downward motion there and leaving little gaps so that it creates the illusion of like a lighter hair. You might not be able to see it from the distance but just makes it look like there's little lighter hairs in between. some nougats again I think it starts a lot more realistic when you add the nougat nougat, nugget, nougat More shadow underneath there. And then it's going to create that sort of just add in little, um, those like little triangle shapes to create the negative space for the lighter hairs here. So you're sort of drawing round them. The shadowing in between the lighter hairs. That's how you get more of a realistic looking drawing. Rather than trying to draw the um, individual hairs with like, the darker pencil, you're drawing in between them. I hope that makes sense. going to slightly finish this little bit here and then I'm pretty happy with how that is looking so 
just going to use a bit of ivory. Yeah. And I'm going to use a nougat. I'm going to use burnt orca first. Just add a bit of warmth. A few hair strokes following the direction. Like so. Then nougat. So like a little clump of lighter hair, light fur here. There we go. That is looking better. It's going to go over it slightly, it's a bit too light. And then dark sepia on top of there. Leaving this look like a clump here. Just blending the little hair strokes into the outer parts of the eye. A few more here. Just crisscrossing over each other. So they look natural. Sharpen that up. A little bit there. Okay. I think for the first part of this tutorial, that is good progress. And so next time we'll carry on just extending out from those eyes and see how far we get then so i hope you've enjoyed this first part once again i'll make sure i list everything that you need to know down below all the pencils the paper uh, everything and join me next time for the next part in this tutorial please subscribe if you haven't already then you make sure you get the notification when uh, i upload so yeah thank you very much and i'll see you next time